building a modern, interoperable, international payment and settlement system, RippleNet, based on blockchain technologies. Our ultimate goal we call the Internet of Value, payments as easy as email for enterprises of all sizes and for consumers around the world. Obviously, we're not going to build that all by ourselves. It's an audacious goal. And in eight years, we've learned a lot about where the challenges are, but also where the opportunities are. The good news? CBDCs can make domestic settlement faster, more reliable, and less costly. And that's important. You can't have good international payments without good domestic settlement. International payments are more important than you might think because they're just so inefficient today. They often simply don't take place. Most emails wouldn't have been sent by postal mail if we didn't have email. The communication simply wouldn't have happened. An enormous amount of valuable commerce simply doesn't happen because international payments are so slow, unreliable, costly, and complex. The opportunity is enormous. There's typically a domestic transfer on each end of any international payment. If those don't work well, the international payment doesn't work well. And equally importantly, if you imagine an international settlement system with great characteristics like speed, certainty, low failure rates, those benefits won't be seen by the endpoints of the payment unless the domestic components on both ends of the international payment have them too. Countries that don't modernize their domestic systems will not see the benefits of the revolution in payments taking place today pushed to the endpoints in that country. Working to build modern international payments, we've discovered that the biggest obstacle is very often the last hop, getting the funds to the payment recipient through the domestic payment system. But lacking connectivity to consumers, CBDCs won't solve the last mile problem that has made modernizing international payments so difficult. Fortunately, domestic systems are modernizing. SEPA, Singapore, others have very strong domestic systems. The U.S. is implementing Fed now, though that won't be live for another few years. It's important that these payment systems are built on newer technologies that are compatible with each other. At a minimum, they won't be able to confer the benefits of improved international settlement to the payments originator and recipient if they aren't modernized. At worst, those payments won't work at all. Solo Scrooge, sending peace and blessings to you all out there. Hashtag Solo Nation. How's it going, my people? Hope everyone's well. Appreciate you all for the love and support of the channel. Hit the subscribe button for us, my people. If you're not subscribed, we're giving you updates on XRP, Sologenic, Corium. Hit the like button for me that pushes us, pushes the channel through the analytics and helps the channel grow. So shout out to Danny Dark. Danny Dark, he said, he posted, Tobias, Adrian in the same room as Brad G. Tobias, Adrian in the same virtual room as David Schwartz. All speaking about domestic and international cross-border settlement. So let's furthermore hear what David Schwartz was talking about and what he's saying. So there's an opportunity here to bridge domestic real-time payment systems, such as FedNow, Clearinghouse for U.S. Dollars, with powerful benefits for small and medium enterprises and ultimately consumers around the world. We need to build systems with common principles just as the Internet was built. Today, many computer networks are effectively just part of the Internet, but this wasn't always the case. As many of you may know, Cisco rose to dominance among competitors because they could make legacy systems that were already there connect to the Internet, while competitors frequently required you to build new Internet-like networks. Today, most networks look like the Internet, and this isn't a concern, but it took interoperability to get there. There was payments and settlement are in that pre-Internet state. There's still that huge mismatch. It's walled garden after walled garden with limited interoperability through a massive number of limited interconnections. Liquidity is spread out and enterprises need to keep money spread across these systems when they don't know which domestic payments they'll need to make next in which countries. The result is high cost due to trap funds and the need to pre-fund transactions often days in advance. Today, many sovereign countries around the world want independence from such a system that gives jurisdictions like the U.S. and the EU extraterritorial control over systems in those sovereign countries and regions. Saudi Arabia, for example, wants a payment system in the Middle East that respects their sovereignty. If each country issues their own CBDC or starts using stable coins denominated in different regional currencies, we risk repeating this mistake yet again. We drastically need interoperability between these virtual currencies and between virtual currencies and traditional assets and systems. A CBDC, by definition, is going to carry the same capital controls, trade agreements, politics as its corresponding fiat currency did, and countries are not going to want to deal with another country's capital controls, nor should they, they're sovereign nations. If you're looking at cross-border, that, that key factor is interoperability. You're working across jurisdictions and across assets. You need a neutral asset in between different CBDCs, or your liquidity is going to be divided among the N-squared pairs of CBDCs. Similarly, if other assets, such as securities around the world, get tokenized, there's even more need for a neutral asset between multiple CBTCs and possibly a large number of new assets in new asset classes. Shout out to David Schwartz. He says you're going to need 
a neutral asset in between CBDCs. <laughs> and I give, I, give, I give you all one guess as to what that neutral asset is. XRP. So you're going to need a neutral asset, my people. Come on. So Tobi Tobias Adrian. Shout out Tobias Adrian. Tobias Adrian, who is he? Tobias Adrian is a German and American economist who has been financial counsellor of the International Monetary Fund and head of their Monetary and Capital Markets Department since 2017. And he clearly recognises the need for XRP. The International Monetary Fund, what is it? IMF. The, Interna the International Monetary Fund, IMF, is an organisation of 190 countries working to foster global monetary cooperation, secure financial stability, facilitate international trade, promote high employment and sustainable economic growth, and reduce poverty around the world. So that's their goal. That's what they claim their goal is. Okay? Tobias Adrian, shout out Danny Dark again. Tobias Adrian reckons one global CBDC platform. Our blueprint for a new class of platforms would ensure greater interoperability, efficiency and safety in cross-border payments as well as in domestic financial markets. So BIS, they're saying unified leisure. IMF are saying common platform leisure. Let's take a listen. I'll stop here. So um, our first uh, panelist is uh, Tobias uh, Adrian, who is the financial counselor and the director of the monetary and uh, capital markets uh, department of the IMF. Great. Thank you so much. Um, just a year ago, all the talk was about crypto assets, bitcoins and its multiple evolutions. And uh, today I'm going to shift and talk more about e-money. In particular, I'm going to focus on stable coins and how they relate to central bank digital currency and what it might mean for the international financial system. Uh, most of you know about XRP and, and, and the other things that Ripple is doing. He's been a CTO in the industry for some time. In prior work, he, he did uh, encrypted crowd storage and encrypted uh, enterprise messaging and many other areas where, where he brings expertise. So I'll turn it over to to. Tobias for 20 minutes. Thanks, Tobias. Yeah, wonderful. It's uh, very nice to see uh, many friends online. Yeah, a... What you want to uh, use is, is, a, is a common ledger, right? So distributed ledgers have many problems. Uh, the lack of finality, the lack of identity. So to use new technologies for policy purposes, having a common ledger, perhaps run by the central bank or by uh, an agency appointed by the central bank, uh, Today's global financial system is more complex than ever before. Yet as the world's economies grow, the infrastructure they rely on needs to evolve. Every nation has its own independent monetary policy and regulatory standards. So, to use new technologies for policy purposes, having a common ledger, perhaps run by the central bank. A common ledger, my people. A common ledger. And what is that common ledger? And I'll stop here. So, um... That common ledger is the ledger that's built with the same core technology as the XRP ledger. <laughs> Come on, my people. You know, the dots are being connected. Banks will interact with XRP. So look, the IMF quietly recognised XRP for cross-border payments in 2018 and that that that, that um hold on sorry my people when was that put out look june the 21st so yesterday these articles look june the 19th 2023 imf officially presents blueprint for cross-border cbdc's 
So this is what's happening, my people. Look, more updates for Ripple. Crypto firm Ripple gets in principal payments license in Singapore. Ripple said it received in principal approval of a major payment institution license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, the country's central bank. The license allows Ripple to offer regulated digital payment token products and services and expand customers' use of XRP, a cryptocurrency it is closely associated with. It comes as Ripple continues to spar with the Securities and Exchange Commission over a lawsuit. So this is what's happening, my people. So also, also built on the same core technology, or, or the core technology, which is the XRPL, is Sologenic. And Sologenic are tokenizing stocks, commodities, ETFs. So this is what I mean when, when the banks are ready you know, to put their hedge funds into stocks, Walmart, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Berkshire Halfway, all of these stocks, when they're ready, the XRP ledger will provide efficiency. It will save them costs. No, no, no third party fees. So Sologenic is run and runs on the XRPL, my people. For those who don't know, if you want to learn more about Sologenic, look at my earlier videos that I done when I first started the channel last year. So crypto bubbles, crypto bubbles, everything's green right now. <laughs> it's all green right now, my people. Look, Pepe up forty five percent, Shib thirteen percent. Aptos, 8%. Chilies, 9%. Gala, 8%. ICP. So, we're just seeing green across the board. We're seeing green across the board, my people. Is it sustainable? Can we, you know, can these runs... How long is these runs going to last? So the Crypto Wolf, shout out Crypto Wolf, he said, Bullish news we have seen come out over the past week in crypto. BlackRock officially files for spot Bitcoin ETF. Wisdom Tree files for spot Bitcoin ETF. Invesco re reactivates spot Bitcoin ETF filing. Investment firm Valkyrie files for spot Bitcoin ETF. Mastercard files trademark application to develop crypto and blockchain software. Dutch bank applies for regulatory license to operate crypto custody service. Citadel, F Fidelity and Charles Schwab launch new crypto exchange platform, hashtag EDX markets. All of this is happening. A lot of bullish news, my people, but is this a trap? Are we, are we, are we taking off? Are we, are we going to take off? Or is this setting us everyone up to put their money in? And to be wrecked. Yeah? We'll see my people. Either way, you know, I'm in positions. If it go, if we go up, I'm in positions. If we go down, I buy more. No problem. So let's look at the total liquidations. 24 hours. $280 million wrecked. Wrecked. 58.77 million of those of that wreckage was those who went long. And 159 0.25 million of that wreckage is of those who went short so my people i appreciate you all for the love and support of the channel if you got anything out of this update hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'm solo scrooge with the solo news and i'll catch you on the next one peace